Hello there, and welcome to the next exciting episode of IELTS Speaking Part 3, now available on Netflix. <laughs> no, seriously, it's not. It's here, it's on YouTube. But listen, today we're going to be looking at IELTS Part 3 and the topic of borrowing things. Let's jump straight into it. Hi guys, it's Keith from IELTS Speaking Success and today I'm really excited to share some ideas and question types all about part three on the topic of borrowing things. We'll be looking at question types, some idiomatic language and some nice ways you can give some good answers for what is quite a difficult area of IELTS speaking, part three. First of all, just to let you know, um, I do offer free lessons on Facebook every Tuesday and Thursday, 10 o'clock Spanish time. Facebook Live, you can come and join us. It's quite a fun and interactive class. And I want to let you know that a lot of the ideas today have come from that class. So a big thank you to all of the students who are sharing their ideas, who are inspiring me to do more and more with this work. It really is great. Thank you so much. And if you're not in the class yet, why not? Come and join us. Also, if you want a full course to prepare for IELTS speaking, I do have a, a course on Udemy. It's called IELTS Speaking Success. Get a band 7 plus. Check it out downstairs, <laughs> down below. OK, let's go straight into part three. First of all, let's look at the, the part two question that's related to this topic, right? The recent question is describe something you borrowed from your friends or family. And then part three goes on to look at these questions. What kinds of things do people often borrow? Why don't people like to borrow expensive things from others? Should companies borrow ideas for their products from other companies? Oh, now that's an interesting question at the end. There are other questions, but these are the kind of question you may get for this topic. Let's have a look at them one by one. The first one, what kinds of things? Again, we've seen this question before, but it is quite common. What kind of or what kinds of blah, 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 blah. My suggestion is to give two or three things. Don't give a list of 20, just two or three and take one and go down into some detail about it. What kinds of things do people often borrow? Well, before we begin, let's just get clear about the verb to borrow and the verb to lend, right? We borrow something from someone. I borrow a pen from you, okay? That means I am taking it, but I have to give it back. If I lend something to you, then I am giving you something, hoping, <laughs> please give it back. So I lend my book to Alan. You can also say, I lend Alan my book, okay? And then to give back or to return is the, the other verb. Okay, so be careful because in the north of England, um, some people get this confused, right? They confuse borrow and lend. They might say, listen, can you borrow me your book? No, that it should be, can you lend me your book, right? I want to take it. So I borrow, you lend. So be careful if your teacher's from Manchester or the north of England, because we sometimes get confused. So that out of the way, notice as well how polite British people are, right? It's not, uh, oi, I want to borrow your book. No, oi, can I borrow your book? No, I couldn't borrow your book, could I? Oh, it's a double whammy. I couldn't borrow your book, could I? How polite British people are. <laughs> well, sometimes. So let's move on. So thinking about ideas, what kind of things do we borrow? Well, when I was younger and at university and starting out in my working life, sometimes uh, I would borrow money. 
You couldn't lend me £20, could you? £20? What do you think I am? The Bank of England? Oh, you couldn't lend me... Polite, right? You couldn't lend me £2, could you? So I would borrow money. Some people borrow money. Of course, at, at university or working, we would often borrow books, um, borrow pens. Maybe you'd borrow your mate's notes if you've missed the lecture or missed the class. A lot of things you can borrow. Some people borrow clothes, right? You've got a special party, you've got nothing to wear because you've already worn your 30 dresses once each. You need something new, so you may borrow a dress from a friend, especially one that you like and who has similar taste to you. Hmm. What else could you borrow? You might borrow a car or a bicycle. You can borrow all sorts of things, right? Um, we used to have a neighbour living close by, a very trusted neighbour, um, because we live in a high-rise building and we don't know all the neighbours, but we used to know one neighbour who was the trusted neighbour. And if we needed some ingredients, I would nip next door, I would go next door and I would borrow some sugar or some flour because there's nothing worse coming back from the shops, getting ready to bake a cake and realise you forgot to buy the sugar. So you can borrow some ingredients from your neighbours as well. It's worth noting we can borrow things from people, but also, of course, you can borrow things from institutions. You borrow books from a library. You borrow money from the bank. So you can take out a loan or you can take out a mortgage if you're buying a house. So generally speaking, you'll borrow money from a bank. Good. And here's a bit of a funny one, right? Um, we do borrow words. And we actually talk about borrowed words from other languages. So in English, we borrow words from, well, every language. We borrow words from Italian, ciao, right? Ciao, see you later. We borrow uh, au revoir from French. We borrow the siesta. I'm going to have a siesta from Spanish. And other languages do it, right? Um, I think in French they say le football. It's an English word. They've borrowed the word. In Spanish, they go hacer, hacer el footing, <laughs> which is not quite right, but they've got foot footing and they've made it into a verb to go jogging. Hacer el footing. Um, coffee. Chinese have taken the word coffee and they've borrowed the words. So you can, if you like, talk about borrowed words from other languages. So... Let's have a look at a possible model answer here. What kinds of things do people often borrow? Well, there's a wide range of things that people borrow. I think we borrow books from libraries. We borrow money from the bank sometimes, although we also borrow money from friends and families. Um, we could borrow clothes from friends as well. Um, it's very common in my country for people, when they're buying a house, to borrow money from the bank. So they apply for a mortgage. Um, the, blank, the bank will give them the money, um, to, or at least part of the money, to buy the house. But of course, when you pay it back, you have to pay back with interest. And so that is, I think, a common situation where people will borrow things. Right, let's move on to the next question. Why don't people like to borrow expensive things from others? Well... As far as I'm concerned, that's a nice signpost, right? As far as I'm concerned. And notice the as becomes us because it's not stressed. So whenever we don't stress small words like prepositions, they become the weak form, us. As far as I'm concerned, as far as I'm concerned, there are two things here to look at two reasons that people don't borrow expensive things. On the one hand, um, it's because they're afraid they're going to damage it. And on the other hand, it may be they're worried about losing it. So if you damage something like somebody's car or somebody's favourite pen, imagine a friend has lent you their Mont Blanc pen worth, you know, thousands of euros, and then you go and lose it. You have to pay back that money. And so that will stop a lot of people from lending it. Likewise, 
if you take a car and you damage somebody's car, um, gosh, you'd have to pay them back. Although normally that person should have insurance, so it wouldn't matter too much. Although, of course, later their premium will go up because they've made a claim. So I think those are two reasons, right, that people tend not to borrow expensive things. Either they're afraid of damaging it or spoiling it or maybe losing it. That's a model answer. It wasn't meant to be a model answer. I was just chatting to you. But there are some ideas you can talk about, right? The word damage is good. Lose is very simple. A nice bit of grammar here. You can use the conditional, right? Um, so if they lose it, they will have to pay it back. If they damage it, they will have to pay back what it was worth. So it's a simple first conditional, if plus the present, and then subject and will. They will have to do something. If they lose it, they'll have to pay it back. Or they will ha if they lose it, they'll have to pay for it. Okay. If you want some idiomatic expressions, haha, um, you could say, well, fork out a lot of money. Fork out. Fork is from the knife and fork when you're eating, right? And I think also the farmer has a big tool. It's a fork that they use to move the hay. So to fork out is to take out and pay a lot of money. Um, so you have to fork out a lot of money. If you lose a Mont Blanc pen, nice French accent, if you lose a Mont Blanc Blanc pen, <laughs> Mont Blanc, Mon Dieu, c'est Mont Blanc, Mont Blanc. If you lose a Mont Blanc pen, you will have to fork out a lot of money for it. Or another expression is pay back a fortune. Fortune is a lot of money. If you lose the Mont Blanc pen, you'll have to pay back a fortune. <laughs> oh, it must be that croissant I had this morning. It's affecting me. So notice this kind of question, right? Why don't people blah, 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 blah. Well, you've noticed if you watched last week's video, we have why do people do something? And this is where you're speculating or imagining why people do something. Um, here it's the same, but it's why don't they do something? Um, so again, you're speculating, speculating, speculating. It might be, possibly, it could be that maybe people blah, 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 blah. Great. Let's move on. Next question. Should companies borrow ideas for their products? Should companies borrow ideas for their products from other companies? Now, this kind of question is often begins with, do you think blah, 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 or here should blah, blah, blah. Um, so it's asking for your opinion. So you want to try and give your opinion and say why. And remember the example. Simple three steps for part two. Opinion, why, example. Get that and you're well on the way. So this takes the discussion of borrowing into a really interesting area, right? So it's not just borrowing from friends, but companies borrowing ideas. Because I think it's a fine line between borrowing and stealing, right? So for example, let's say when... Apple were one of the first to create the iPhone and they created this smartphone. So now you can swipe the phone and you can download apps. And that became very fashionable and trendy to have this kind of smartphone. And very quickly, other companies were inspired and borrowed the idea, borrowed in inverted commas, maybe. They borrowed the idea and they invented similar phones, right? So you had your Lenovo, Samsung, Xiaomi, all of those creating similar phones. And they just borrowed the idea. So long as you respect the intellectual property rights, then it's borrowing an idea. I guess the problem is when you infringe or break um, the intellectual property rights, then you have a problem and that's stealing. Okay. So... Um, I think that's quite good language, actually. When you're talking about this topic, you can talk about 
intellectual property. You can talk about patents, patents, sorry, patents, which are um, the kind of the legal contract to protect a product or a service, um, a trademark, I think, or the, the copyright is, again, it's kind of the legal contract to make something, to protect something. So you don't use exactly the same thing. Um, you can also, oh yes, borrow in inverted commas. I do see some candidates do that when they're speaking and they say, well, companies shouldn't borrow um, ideas. That's great. You, but you can even show off more your language and say companies shouldn't borrow in inverted commas their, the ideas from others, right? In inverted commas, show off your language. Why not? So, what else? I don't know. So you could here be talking about the good aspects, right? That they should borrow ideas um, because that will promote competition. It will nurture innovation. It will give us a wider choice of products and services. It's just promoting and creating new and different things. Otherwise, that wouldn't happen. I think, if I remember correctly, it was Isaac Newton who said, we stand on the shoulders of giants, right? We learn from others. We take their ideas and we build on them. I mean, why would you reinvent the wheel and do the same thing again and again? No, you can borrow from others and use their ideas. Absolutely. Provided, so long as you respect the intellectual, intellectual property rights. Great. There was the case, right? And I think I shouldn't name names, should I? Katy Perry. <laughs> I think it was Katy Perry, but it doesn't matter. This is IELTS. This is not the music industry. But she wrote a song a while back um, and it was a great song. And of course, she's famous. So she was very successful with the song. But then a little known um, singer actually complained and said, that melody was my melody and you've stolen it and you've made a fortune um, from that melody. And so she tried to take the singer Katy Perry to court and sue her. And it was interesting because there was a fine line, right, between borrowing the melody and what Katy Perry said was, well, I just I just took your your melody and I kind of borrowed it and adapted it and made it my own. And what the singer said was, no, you copied my melody. And it's difficult with things like intangible things that you can't touch because it's not black and white, whether you can, uh, it's like ideas, right? At what point do you steal an idea and at what point do you borrow an idea? In the end, I think the court ruled that Katy Perry was fine, that she had just been inspired by the song. It wasn't that close. But between you and me, when you listen to both songs, they are very, very similar. So there's a fine line between borrowing and stealing, maybe. <laughs> Great. So we've looked at three questions, three types of questions with some ideas on this topic of borrowing. I'm going to wrap up here. Thank you very much for joining me. If you enjoyed this video, please do share it. Do subscribe. Remember to come and join us. Come and join the fun on Facebook Live every Tuesday and Thursday, 10 o'clock. I look forward to seeing you there. All the best. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>